When you open up a can, you may not notice the lining inside, but believe it or not, that lining may contain a synthetic estrogen. That's right, a sex hormone, and it's in almost every single can we consume. As part of a Fox 5 investigation, we decided to have some of the cans of food you eat every day tested, and wait until you see the results. This could be your table any day of the week. A delicious plate of pasta topped with tomato sauce, some hearty soup, a tuna fish sandwich, a side of green peas. Food that millions of Americans consume daily. But wait until you see what could be inside your food. This is a chemical that the people who put it into plastic were insane. His name is Dr. Fred Vomsall. He's a professor of biology at the University of Missouri. You may not know his name, but you probably know his work. He recently created a huge uproar within the scientific community after releasing a study on plastic baby bottles and the controversial chemical many of these bottles are made with, called bisphenol A. This is a chemical that in 1936 was considered for use as a estrogen drug. Then in the 1950s, some tricky chemists found that they could link this chemical together and it creates a hard, clear, glass-like plastic. And this glass-like plastic is sprayed into cans we buy every day. The only problem with that is the plastic is then made from a sex hormone. And it's virtually in every can of food we consume. And according to Dr. Von Saul, Bisphenol A is a big problem because he says it leaches into the foods we eat. And when you heat this plastic or put tomato sauce in it, the acid degrades the plastic and then the food that's in there is full of this sex hormone. Dr. Vamsal says they have tested bisphenol A in animals and the results are disturbing. We started testing it at levels tens of thousands of times below what anybody had ever tested before and found that it profoundly damaged the male reproductive system. Now we know it causes brain damage and it causes breast cancer and prostate cancer. So we decided to do our own tests of common foods we eat every day. We went to different grocery stores and purchased tomato sauces, soups, peas, tuna fish, as well as plastic containers and food wraps. We then sent them all to Dr. Von Saul's lab in Missouri for testing. The food was removed from the cans. The cans were all clean, washed multiple times with water, allowed to dry, and then we put ultra pure water in the cans to determine how stable the lining of the can was when just faced with water being in contact with it for 24 hours. The results were concerning. Every single product here put out an amount of bisphenol A that would be in the danger zone. The highest levels measured in micrograms were found in cans of Hunt's tomato sauce, followed by Red Pack, Del Monte peas, the Starkist tuna, and the Rubbermaid plastic container. This is a chemical that can alter the way your cells function at below a trillionth of a gram, one million times lower than this. And he says if the research on animals doesn't concern you, this will. Dr. Von Saul says when he places bisphenol A leached water into a test tube with breast cancer cells, the cancer cells multiply rapidly. These amounts would massively stimulate these cells. Bisphenol A is big business here in the United States. It is estimated that the chemical companies produce 7 billion pounds of it a year and it's making its way into our bodies. According to the CDC, 95% of Americans have detectable levels of bisphenol A in their urine. Dr. Von Saul says the worst thing anyone can do is microwave food in a plastic container covered in plastic wrap. Stop doing that immediately. The hotter a product becomes, 
the greater the amount of bisphenol A that will come out of it. We need to have a balanced uh, presentations about chemicals in the environment. Sharon Keniz is vice president of the American the Chemistry phenol. Council, a trade organization that represents the chemical companies. She says bisphenol A is safe to use. Bisphenol A has been very heavily studied and it's been studied by um, many of the regulatory agencies around the world and consistently they have stated that for the current uses for that that bisphenol A is safe. The FDA tells us it is actively reviewing the safety of bisphenol A and in a statement adds considering all the evidence including the very low dietary exposure to BPA and the fact that bisphenol A has not demonstrated adverse effects when consumed by animals in amounts far higher than humans would consume, FDA sees no reason at this time to ban or otherwise restrict the uses now authorized. It has never been banned by any country around the world, and we're confident in its use. Dr. Vomsal says the FDA and other federal agencies are working with antiquated data. There are 700 published scientific studies about the health effects of bisphenol A that the FDA has never gotten around to looking at. We contacted the parent companies for the products we tested and in individual statements the companies reiterated that bisphenol A is used in their products because it has been deemed safe and it is approved by the FDA. I'm Mary Garofalo. My name is Fred Vamsal. I'm a professor of biology at the University of Missouri in Columbia. Most of what we know, with a few exceptions, come from studies of animals, rats, mice, laboratory experiments. And what we've seen in those studies is that there's brain damage and the animals exposed to very low amounts of, say, bisphenol A show attention deficit disorder, hyperactivity, and neurochemical changes that are associated with ADHD in humans. That is a decrease in the neurotransmitter dopamine, which is also implicated in uh, causing Parkinson's disease. So we have neurochemical changes, brain changes, hyperaggression. The other thing we see is the entire male reproductive system is abnormal. And that's very easy to understand because this is an estrogen, and estrogens during development are known to lead to abnormalities in the male reproductive system. In the male, it also causes prostate cancer. That is expressed later in life. In females, the interesting thing about this chemical is it causes chromosomal damage in the eggs in a female's ovaries. And in, it's implicated in miscarriage in animal studies. And there is actually a human study in Japan where women with elevated levels of bisphenol A were the women who were repeatedly miscarrying, never able to have a successful pregnancy. And so the animal data and the human data are identical. The other thing bisphenol A causes in animals is polycystic ovarian disease called PCOS and uterine fibroids, the major source of infertility and hysterectomy in women. And then finally, everybody knows there's an obesity epidemic. Mm -hmm. This chemical causes obesity when you're exposed to it during an early life and it leads to type 2 diabetes. And um, the final one that women are, of course, concerned with, when you're exposed to this during the period when the breast tissue is differentiating, later on in life, it causes breast cancer. You basically just listed most of the major public health kind of problems in the United States. 30 years ago, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, was called adult onset diabetes. Mm -hmm. It's now occurring in five-year-olds. That had never happened before. And if you look at the incidence of diabetes and the production of bisphenol A, they pr parallel each other identically. One of the other things to emphasize is we are most concerned about these chemicals because if you disturb development of a baby, the consequences of that are forever. Yeah. 
one of the things that we found out in the VIAC scandal mm -hmm. that it took a whistleblower from within the FDA to come out and say the FDA has all of the evidence uh, that Vioxx is killing people. But this isn't, this is according to the FDA regulator who turned in the yeah. FDA essentially. He said this is an agency that once they make a decision, they do not want the public to think that they make wrong decisions. And so what their strategy is, is to try to deny that they would ever make a mistake, even at the expense of a major public health disaster. This is an agency that doesn't acknowledge error. So more concerned with saving face than... Than saving people. Yeah.